All right, so let's do mean years. What is mean years? Mean years uh, is, a, again, inner ear condition that is affecting your balance and hearing. Okay. Uh, again, what can be the, the presenting complaint? It depends, I mean. So dizziness, so what do you have to do? Again, uh, you go for before, during, after very quickly. Yeah, so during you can ask if the word I go is the presenting complaint. You'll elaborate about it. Uh, uh, I mean... Uh, uh, for how long uh, it, it lasted obviously and you go for if there is any loss of consciousness or if there is any fits falls that is something that you can ask right and then after you'll ask the things like uh, nausea vomiting if it was there any kind of trauma confusion sleepiness all those things that we can ask and before we are actually trying to make the diagnosis for me years what i would say remember a few things i want you to remember dvt yeah so uh, what we have got, it is uh, deafness, uh, we have got vertigo, and we have got tinnitus, right? And also what you can ask is ear fullness. So these are the main thing that you will see in mean ears. So DVT, deafness, vertigo, tinnitus. So patient is going to have, have a hearing loss. Patient is going to have true vertigo, spinning of the room, and tinnitus. Tinnitus is again ringing sensation in the ear. All right. And obviously, we can ask for ear fullness as well. So these are the things that you need to ask. A hearing loss, tinnitus, vertigo, uh, headache, they might have ear fullness. So these are the things uh, uh, that you can definitely ask. All right. Now, what are you going to be? What are going to be your differential? Same uh, vestibular neuritis, labyrinthitis, BPPV and acoustic neuroma. All right. BPPV is only vertigo. And again, you know, when we have got uh, mean ears, we're not looking for BPPV to uh, rule out, isn't it? BPPV is very, I mean, uh, harmless problem. Mean ears, you need to do a lot of things for still, right? Uh, labyrinthitis, again, uh, Fever, that's something that you can ask. And obviously, for mean years, you need to rule out acoustic neuroma. So what you're going to ask for eye problem and the numbness on the face, uh, that is going to be very, very, very important to rule out acoustic. All right. Diet, alcohol, smoking, family history, travel, that's something you can ask. And if it is for a long time, how it has affected your work, your home, all those things you can ask. Right. Uh, general physical examination, vitals, otoscopy, you can do. Uh, you can do neurological examination as well. And we're going to do maybe hearing test or audiometry. That is something that you can do. Now, when it um, when it comes to the the treatment what can be done again it can be managed outpatient as well sometime you may have to admit the patient as well again it uh, uh, depends on case to case so it can be admission or can be uh, managed as outpatient as well what's the treatment so again treatment wise what you have to do is again it is a symptomatic treatment symptomatic treatment that is uh, uh, what you have to do here uh, like uh, antihistaminics, beta histine, uh, prochlorperazine. So the symptomatic treatment, that's what you can do, whatever the symptoms patient has got. Uh, now patient has got tinnitus, ringing sensation in the ear. You know, it is very annoying sometimes. So tinnitus counseling that is usually done. So we usually counsel the patient whenever they have got this uh, uh, like ringing sensation in the ear. So what, what are the things we should focus on? What are the things we should not... Uh, uh, give attention to. So that's something that we do in tinnitus counseling. Patient has got hearing loss. Uh, so maybe we have to go for hearing aids as well. CBT is very important. Lifestyle advices and informing DVLA. In mean years and acoustic neuroma, it's always good to mention the patient about uh, DVLA as well. Any vertigo, you always say do not drive. But when it comes to hearing loss as well, when it comes to uh, say, for example, uh, what I go inner ear, mean ears and acoustic. So I've got a lot of other symptoms as well. So better not to drive. And you can also say inform DVLA as well. <clears throat> Another thing which is going to be very important in mean ears is uh, unilateral tinnitus. So you have to see if a uh, patient has got ringing sensation. Is it in one ear or is it in both the ears? So that's going to be very important as well. 
Uh, okay, so always make sure we are mentioning about follow-up and uh, warning signs, right? So warning signs you can go give for a caustic neuroma, any weakness in any part of the body, any, uh, what do you say, blurring of vision and numbness on the face. So that is something that you can mention for the safety netting, right? Now, what I was telling it to use unilateral tinnitus. It is very important, right? So mean ears, that's fine. Patient has got tinnitus in both the ears. But when patient tells you, I've got uh, tinnitus only, ringing sensation, that is only in one ear. It is a red flag sign. Unilateral tinnitus. What is tinnitus? Hearing noises in one ear often describes a ringing, a buzzing, humming. It's persistently, it's, it's there. It's really annoying. So what it could be, unilateral tinnitus it could be a sign of acoustic neuroma. It could be a sign of acoustic neuroma. So please, please make sure you investigate the patient for acoustic neuroma. So what you will do is MRI scan, right? So what you're talking about, tinnitus. So hearing noises in the ear, that's what your patient is having. Obviously, we'll be asking about other uh, things uh, for tinnitus, ask other symptoms of mean ears, ask about DVT, uh, hearing loss, you will be asking, vertigo, you will be asking, nausea, vomiting, you will be asking, and obviously, uh, ear fullness, you can ask, and to rule out other differentials, what I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask for fever, and any discharge, and all, like maybe your titus medias, your differentials, quick past personal history, psychosocial history, you can ask, uh, general physical examination, vitals, neurological examination, uh, otoscopy, you can do, hearing test you can do right now again unilateral tinnitus please make sure we are doing an mri scan right so this is very 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 important unilateral tinnitus it's a red flag sign please make sure we are not missing a caustic neuroma another thing that i want you to know about a caustic neuroma so if you have got a elderly patient with Balance problem. Yeah. Elderly patient, uh, balance problem, and hearing loss, uh, which is uh, SNHL, sensory neural hearing loss. Elderly patient, sensory neural hearing loss with balance problem is acoustic neuroma unless proven otherwise. All right, so what did we understand? Unilateral tinnitus, please investigate for uh, acoustic neuroma. Elderly patient with hearing loss, that is sensory neural hearing loss, with the balance problem is acoustic neuroma unless proven otherwise. So make sure we are not missing on these points. It's really, really important. All right. Otherwise, the treatment, as I said, if it is tinnitus, so it is a tinnitus counseling, CBT, uh, hearing aids, that's something that we can uh, give it to the patient. Right. Follow up uh, DVLA advices. And you can mention like if the tinnitus that is uh, getting worse and tinnitus that beats in time with your pulse, that is pulsatile tinnitus, that is also a red flag. So make sure uh, you refer the patient to the specialist as soon as possible. All right. IPS-wise, again, idea, concerns, expectation, chuck and check. Give the information in bits of uh, chunks and check the understanding. Patient involvement, patient-centered consultation, acknowledge, keep acknowledging the patient emotions, body language, signposting, active listening, right? Uh, is it serious? It could be, right? So as you understood, if it is unilateral tinnitus, uh, is it serious? It could be a sign of acoustic neuroma. So that's really, really important. Yeah. So that's something that you need need to look for. Will it go away? Yes, I mean, it can. Again, you have to acknowledge, will it go away? I mean, it is, uh, for me, it's a difficult question for me to answer. What we have to do is we have to investigate you further. And once we have got the investigations done, I've got the report and what's the diagnosis, only then I'll be able to tell you uh, how long it's going to take. All right. So what I was talking to you about acoustic neuroma. In acoustic neuroma, what you have got, you have got everything which you will have in uh, mean ears, right? So that's why mean ears is your topmost differential as well, right? Other differentials, obviously, vestibular neuritis, labyrinthitis, or BPPV, all right. But here, what's going to be there, DBT, you'll have deafness, hearing loss, which is sensory neural hearing loss. You'll have vertigo, you have tinnitus, you have got the double vision, blurring of vision, you have numbness over the face. That is a caustic neuroma. But I told you a couple of uh, mnemonics. If 
your patient has got unilateral tinnitus. So you have to look for acoustic neuroma. If you have got elderly patient, sensory neural hearing loss with balance problem, that is acoustic neuroma again. All right, so don't miss on these things. What do you have to do? You have to go for an MRI scan. The thing is, you know, if you are done with the, uh, I mean, uh, if you were doing the scan for some other reason and accidentally what happened is uh, uh, <clears throat> you were able to find, accidentally what happened is uh, you're able to find uh, acoustic neuroma, you may not have to treat it. However, if it is causing symptoms to the patient, if it is causing symptoms to the patient, only then what you have to do, you have to do an MRI. I mean, you have to take it out. Then you will go for surgery and you'll remove this tumor. Now the hearing loss, is it going to come back? The hearing of the patient, is it going to come back in acoustic neuroma? It's less likely, guys, because it is sensory neural hearing loss. So the hearing may not come back, right? A bit of improvement might be there when you remove that tumor. So what's going to happen when you remove the tumor? Patient may feel a bit better, right? That is there. Uh, but the mainstay of the treatment in terms of hearing loss, it's going to be hearing aids. So you have to give hearing aids to the patient, right? So that's going to be very, very important in terms of acoustic neuroma. Do not forget to tell the patient to inform DVLA not to drive and give the warning signs as well. If things are getting worse, let us know. Come back to us and make sure if you're suspecting acoustic neuroma, you go for urgent two weeks referral as well and investigate and treat the patient accordingly. All right. <clears throat> in vestibular neuritis and menial patient will complain of dizzy at first. Uh, uh, we as blind there, why not we rule out uh, hypoglycemia uh, in differentials? Uh -huh. Hypoglycemia. Mm, you can, I mean, uh, see, uh, if it is dizziness, uh, uh, hypoglycemia so we will be always uh, how we do we always ask with the dizziness if you have got any other symptoms or not and if it is hypoglycemia obviously patient will have a lot of other symptoms as well right and we're asking how long it lasted we can always ask what exactly did you do something because you felt better in bpp for example after a few seconds or a minute or in uh, vestibule it's going to be for a very long time isn't it so did you do something and after that you felt better so that's something that you can uh, uh, do isn't it so hypoglycemia, yeah, I mean, you can definitely keep uh, as your differential, but I would say when you elaborate the dizziness or vertigo, you can easily rule it out. What is signposting? Signposting is doctor, you know what happened in signposting is uh, we actually prepare the patient that these questions are coming. For example, you want to ask sexual history. So patient might not be prepared that you're going to ask sexual history. So what's going to happen is you just do signposting. Let me ask you some questions about uh, uh, sexual history. It might be related to your case. So just preparing the patient, just giving heads up to the patient that these questions are coming. Right. ICE is your idea, concern, expectation. You know, uh, when patient is having any trouble, patient is having vertigo, patient is having uh, maybe cough uh, or uh, headache, whatever. We ask the patient, do you have any idea what's going on? Have you... Uh, maybe uh, are you concerned about anything in particular? What are your expectations from this consultation? So why we do that? So maybe patient has already checked on online or maybe patient uh, friend or family member already had something similar. So that's why they might have a bit of idea. So it's always better before you tell them the diagnosis, you can always ask what is there in your mind. So it's really, really important. Yeah. What's the role of CBT in acoustic neuroma? I mean, if uh, the thing is, you know, a patient might have other symptoms as well. It's not only hearing loss that we have. So a patient might have say tinnitus and all for that. It is going to be really, really important for us to go for uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Okay.